This is urgent. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today in our lead story today. It's Bank of America's urgent warning to all of its customers. We'll show you what the big bank just said and what it suggests all of its customers do right now. And is Tesla's recent announcement indicating there are far deeper problems for the U.S. manufacturing sector? We'll show you what they just said and why it means it's bad news for the U.S. labor market. And is the market prematurely celebrating today's retail sales report? We'll show you why the actual numbers are far worse than what the headline suggests. Plus, we have a sponsor for today's show. We'd like to introduce you Hybrid Power Solutions. You can find them on the CSE under the symbol HPSS.CN. They're an innovative hybrid power solutions company, and their stock has been trading sideways recently, looking to break out. I'll show you what the breakout point is and how you can take advantage of a potential 23% move to the upside. Stay tuned to the end of the show or check out the pinned comment or description for more information now. Let's go to Bank of America, where we picked today's story up with a headline from their global research report. It's equity risk asymmetrically skewed toward further downside to the start of the week. And what Bank of America is suggesting here and warning is that stocks are likely to head lower and in a meaningful way. Let's take a look at what their triggering mechanism is. And they say it's the CTA or machine positioning that could sell on the equity side and begin that on Monday, and according to our models, CTA equity lungs in the US and Europe could largely still be intact, but more so in the US as their stop loss triggers, suggesting that perhaps maybe it's time for you to do the same, are closing in in the US while in Euro, the stocks of 50 closed Friday near their model stop loss level. This implies that further downside will likely put pressure on the CTA US equity longs as European equity longs on the other hand could be in the process of a large unwind and even without stop loss triggers being hit, keep in mind equity trend strength here is deteriorating which implies CTA selling is likely to happen this week unless of course somebody props the market up in a big way but keep in mind we're deep now into the buyback blackout window corporates aren't here and heading into monday b of a goes on to say friday sharp decline in the s p 500 should have vol control strategies selling into the close and reasonable size and with our cta models s p 500 trigger now only 90 basis points away we could see a scenario of cta stop loss triggers vol control leverage unwinds and levered and inverse First ETFs all selling into the close on Monday. Of course, this is being filmed prior to market close. So keep an eye on that because if we see continued weakness in the equity markets, particularly around the world, look for machines to sell, volatility rise, and that means more and more selling. But one thing the machines did seem to get right is their short positions as inflation data comes in high. As trend followers grew their short treasury futures position this week, as yields rose on the back of higher than anticipated March inflation data, which caused our U.S. economic team to push their forecast for the first rate cut all the way back to December. Friday's bond strength as equity struggled. Their models expect trend follower shorts to grow over the next week, which indeed we saw today following the retail sales report. But was that a false move? We'll make that case later, but let's continue because there is something that trend followers are getting bigger on, and that rings the bell for many investors. This will make them very happy as they're projected to keep buying oil and the dollar, giving you some indication indication of maybe where B of A is suggesting you should go. And their model indicates that trend followers may have increased oil and aluminum longs this week and could do so again next week as gold and copper buying have slowed and may slightly come off next week. And in currencies, the U.S. dollar says it's the highest weekly gain since September, and our model projects the CTAs will continue buying versus most currencies they track. So there's it is. You see the warning now from B of A. We'll give you those sell signals right here. Here's all the trigger points. Notably on the bond side, they're already maxed out to the short, but keep in mind, look for them to be long dollar, long oil, and short soon. 
soon, maybe the equity market. But let's talk about Tesla because this could have a broader impact for the U.S. manufacturing sector as Tesla the slash global headcount by more than 10 percent is according to an electric report. And here they say that market is now reacting to this email that Elon Musk sent explaining a duplication of role and job functions in certain areas is the main reason for layoffs, which could affect as much as if you can imagine, 14,000 employees. Now, compared to the broad US economy, that number just doesn't sound very big, and it isn't, but it's really what's going on underneath it, Tesla, that's an indication for the US manufacturing sector. The alleged layoffs come after the company recorded its first quarterly decline in four years and delivered just over 386,000 vehicles in the first quarter, far below consensus estimates and we've seen this in the news that Tesla is seeing its inventory of new cars start to build up. And this is something that's going on in the manufacturing sector all across the U.S. Because one thing that gets fed into the GDP numbers is inventory bills. The problem is if people aren't there to buy it, well, the next move, well, that impacts the labor market in a big way. And here you can see if this report is indeed correct, Elon appears to be tightening Tesla's belt, suggesting broader troubles are ahead for the U.S. economy. And as we're about to make the case, you know, U.S. manufacturing sector in a big way. As today, we have the Empire State Manufacturing Survey. And look at the commentary here. This really sums this report up quite well. And this one was from Richard Dietz. And he is an economic research advisor at the New York Fed. Quote, manufacturing activity continued to contract in New York State in April and employment continued to decline. Optimism about the outlook for future business conditions remains subdued. And so you start to look at what's happening at Tesla with these inventory builds. That means demand is broadly slowing down for the US economy. And that means manufacturers now are going to start cutting back. And this report here from the Empire State, well, that tells us a lot. As the headline general business conditions index rose seven points, but remained below zero, that's contraction, at minus 14.3, new orders and shipments both declined significantly and unfilled orders continued to shrink. And this would make sense because if Tesla's building up inventory of vehicles they can't sell, well, that means demand for new orders is going down. Well, if your order book's dropping, one thing you need to drop as well as employees. We made that case. We're seeing that now as the unfilled orders index held steady at minus 10.1 a sign that unfilled orders in New York continue to fall. The inventories index moved up 16 points to 3.4, indicating that inventories edged higher for the first time in several months, and delivery times index fell to minus 7.9, suggesting that delivery times shortened, meaning if there's less orders, less things happening, deliveries are getting there faster. This is all indications of slowing demand across the economy and manufacturers in likely to lay off next as the index for the number of employees came in at minus 5.1 and the average work week this again suggests layoffs was little change at minus 10.6 again pointing to an ongoing decline in employment levels in hours worked, and this is exactly what we've been making the case of for the U.S. manufacturing sector and the U.S. economy as a whole, that we will see these slowdowns that will hit the manufacturing sectors, demand dropped, then the first thing occurs is, of course, hours work get cuts, and then you start to see employees get cut, and this is all happening, but now the problem is no one has been expecting it. And here you can see the current new orders. This is the Diffusion Index for the Empire State of New York against continued unemployment claims. And what you can see here is that when new orders decelerate, that actually correlates frequently, not always, but frequently with a flatlining or increase in continued claims. Now you can see claims here increasing during, of course, the global financial crisis, but in a healthy economy, you can get a deceleration or even a contraction of new orders, as you can see here in 2010 through 2011 and around 2014 through 2016. And the economy was strong enough to pick those jobs up in other places, but look what happens. You move on to 2018 to 2019, what then happens, claims rise. You see it happening now. And what did we just get from that report? It suggests that there's going to be further layoffs. But this comes at a time when the market is outright celebrating today's retail sales report, indicating there's broad-based demand for the economy. But yet underneath the report, we're going to look at the real numbers 
it actually suggests things are nowhere near as good as the headline number suggests. And if the manufacturing data, what we're seeing from Tesla and the Empire State are accurate, which they believe they are, it suggests demand in the US economy in terms of retail sales over the next coming months is going to drop significantly. And here you can see U.S. retail sales top forecast as consumers keep fueling growth as this is driving a big amount of spending. Here you can see the value receipts up 0.7% in March, matching the highest estimate. There's one thing I want you to be aware of. None of the numbers here are actually inflation adjusted these are nominal so they should be rising in fact nominal retail sales tend to rise even during recessions pretty rare they actually contract but when you adjust things for inflation well the whole picture starts to change the report suggests plenty of momentum in consumer spending heading into the second quarter so long as a robust labor market well of course if what we see at tesla and in the empire state are correct that means the robust labor market is going to go bust sooner than later if that supports household demand there's a risk that inflation will become entrenched in the economy and further delay interest rate cuts from the federal reserve which explains of course the market reaction in treasuries today alongside the recent resurgence in employment growth Growth, the continued resilience of consumption is another reason to suspect the Fed will wait longer before starting to cut interest rates, which now we think won't happen until September. Of course, we know B of A says December it has nothing to do. The Fed doesn't do anything with retail sales, but it's all about the reaction of the bond market. Because think about this, if retail sales are indeed falling, as we're going to look at here in a moment, and that tells us interest rates are too high. The market sees a nominal number, and gets excited. Well, keep in mind, nominal means prices have indeed gone up. And here we can see current new orders. Let's take a look at the Empire State New York data against advanced retail sales. And what we can see is there are very rare times where retail sales actually contract on a year over year basis. In fact, outside of the pandemic, the only time that actually did was during the global financial crisis. Right now, we're seeing a sustained decline in new orders, but notably on a nominal basis, retail sales are indeed holding up. In fact, eight out of 13 categories posted increases led by e-commerce receipts and even gasoline stations rose as prices jumped in the month. It makes perfect sense while auto sales are on the decline. The retail figures largely affect purchases on goods, which comprise a relatively narrow share of the overall consumer outlays. Data later this month will provide more details on inflation adjusted spending on goods and services in March as we're finally going to start getting some actually government produced data on inflation adjusted retail sales. That doesn't mean we're not going to adjust for it. We'll show you what it looks like. But first, now this from Zero Hedge. And here we can see, bear in mind that all this data is indeed nominal, as I suggested, not adjusted for the surge in prices of, well, everything. And so Americans are spending more. That is correct that they're getting less for it. And this was a big drop in real retail sales, real meaning inflation adjusted, as real retail sales have declined for 12 of the last 17 months. And you talk about the impact this has on retailers as we look at this next chart, because you think about from a retailer's perspective, their overhead and costs have gone up, their employment costs have gone up, and what are they seeing on a nominal basis? Well, the, yes, the data says they're making more money in terms of sales. Inflation says no, they're actually not. Eventually that leads to layoffs too. But here we can see retail sales adjusted for the CPI index and what that says is 12 out of the last 17 months, we have seen retail sales fall due to inflation. This is not a good sign for the U.S. economy at all. In fact, here now, when we take a look at the data from New York, the Empire State, that new order data still shown in blue. Now let's adjust this for real, or again, inflation adjusted retail sales. Now I put a horizontal green line so you can see all the places where this ends up contracting. And sure enough, coming out of the dot-com bubble, what happened? Retail sales struggled. The economy almost had a double dip there. How about coming out of the global financial crisis? Well, we can see very clearly Inflation adjusted retail sales went down significantly. That matched more in line with the drop in new orders from the New York State. 
How about that decline heading into what was believed to be a synchronized global recession, or at least the beginning of it, around 2015, 2016? Look at retail sales. They were getting close to zero on an inflation-adjusted basis heading into the pandemic. Well, we note the Fed was cutting rates at this time as retail sales, again, back near zero as demand falls this time a big drop in retail sales on an inflation adjusted basis the only question remains now is how long can retailers hold up in this space before they too are cutting hours and laying people off meanwhile other data suggest consumers are becoming more stretched well that is the obvious they are as u.s credit card delinquency rates were the highest on record in the fourth quarter this from a recent report from the philly fed and sure enough that makes a huge difference here we can take a look at advanced retail sales this will be real again adjusted for inflation against the delinquency rate on credit cards and something that's important to know is when people are delinquent meaning they're missing their payments on their credit card they're behind they tend to charge less and when they head into default well of course the credit card company says no more uh, to you and sure enough what happens here is when we see delinquency rates rising retail sales actually slow down to a crawl that doesn't mean they go negative remember this is inflation adjusted data and you can see here during the dot-com bubble they dip negative briefly global financial crisis there was so much in delinquency yes people cut their spending in a big way you now see 2016 to 2018 that slow down retail sales all due to fact the consumers were getting squeezed and now look at this we see delinquency rates rising setting very high levels we haven't seen a big drop off in real retail sales at least not yet suggesting that is what to come but meanwhile the market is getting really excited about this report in a big way as treasury yields jumped a new 2024 highs after a hot retail sales data again that's because they don't know how to adjust it for inflation but look at this the march retail sales data was the latest in a spate of indicators that show resilience in the u.s economy and sticky inflation but what it suggests is that inflation isn't actually going to remain that sticky for that much longer when you look at the delinquency rates and you look at the inflation adjusted data. It leaves bond traders hungry for clear and conclusive proof that the Fed interest rate cuts are imminent before making any more big bullish wagers. And sure enough, when we look at retail sales against consumer price index, the CPI in red, real retail sales in blue, here's what we can see is real, real retail sales decline and then what happens with lag inflation falls and you see that happen over and over again now it's likely that everyone believes in inflation going higher real retail sales suggest no actually we're likely to see a further decline in prices because what real inflation adjusted data is telling us is that consumers aren't buying as much that means retailers have to cut prices and we can look back at the two-year treasury yield of course we know that's what the fed follows here we can see when retail sales go down why do interest rates fall it makes perfect sense in a debt-based economy you want to actually spur consumption and lower yields is one way to do that and something we think is going to spur a potential big return for your trading account that is the stock of our sponsor for today's show hybrid power solutions you can find them on the csc under symbol hpss.cn again they are an innovative hybrid power company get all the information in the pinned comment and description below let's take a look at this uh, company and i'll show you the chart setup and what the breakout point you need to be watching for because these products that hybrid power solutions puts together they are built to outlast they're proudly engineered and built in canada weather the elements and always outperform and they have the hybrid difference their products are designed and manufactured are safer quieter and more efficient than any other alternative currently on the market and what makes them special is not just that they're in the portable power residential solar and backup power space is what these products do they're weatherproof they have solar charging if you can imagine maximum efficiency under any condition you have three ways to charge you can charge them by solar by vehicle or off the grid and of course made in canada again you can find them on the cse under symbol hpss and they've got some great news coming out here recently this as of last week that they just delivered backup power units to global fiber internet provider and here you can see this is after months of rigorous testing the client selected hps battery pack energy as their preferred backup power 
power solution with the intent to roll a solution out to various locations. This will be big news to drive future sales, future revenue, future profits and interest of investors into the stock. Again, find them on the CSE under symbol HPSS.CN. Here you can see that they deliver some initial sample units to a military air force. This marks a significant milestone in the integration of clean and reliable power solutions into military operations. HP Hybrid Power Solutions looking to be a leader in that space. Now let's take a look at their stock. This is on again the CSE and the symbol HPSS. Here you can see the stock came down and set a low. This looking now at a certain point as a bear trap. It rebounds up and goes sideways. What happens when you see that is that means if you see a long consolidation point after a big decline tells you the next move higher is going to be up. You want to look for a close over 31 cents a share. You go back here. 37 cents you can see the last big volume being traded there look for a breakout again watch that 31 cent level look for a breakout there a move from today's level at around 30 cents suggests a potential 23 percent upside for hybrid power solutions again on the csc under symbol hpss.cn but as always with any company we feature on our show you're under no obligation to purchase their stock be sure to do your own research before placing any trades and with that i'm steve van meter thanks for watching Thanks for being fans. Bye now.